Yahweh promises to gather everyone he scatters. I am a Hebrew. We are Hebrews. I was born in Texas. I am a Hebrew and I am from Florida. I'm a Hebrew and I was born in California. I am a Hebrew and I was born in San Diego, California. I'm a Hebrew. I was born in Indiana. I am a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. I am a Hebrew and I was born in Spain. Watashi wa Hebrew desu. Nihon de umaremashita. Soy Hebrea. Nasi en Puerto Rico. I am a Hebrew from West Africa, Liberia. I am a Hebrew, and I was born in Straight Lane. We are Hebrew. Allow my sister. Shalom, shalom, my sisters. Greeting to each and every listener tonight. I'm your host, Sister Ashley, of another Sister to Sister. Bless each and every one of you in the precious name of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and our Savior. Let's go to Georgia. Let's get a sound check, please, from everyone tuned in in the chat room. Welcome to tonight's show. Go ahead, Sister Jennifer. Let's hear from you. Shalom and blessings, Sister Ashley. Bless you all, Daughters of Zion. Thank you once again for tuning in for another episode of Sister to Sister. It's always an honor to just be here before you. You know, in each episode, it it just gets sweeter and sweeter, the fellowship. So I see tens in the chat room, and it looks like um, we're good to go and everyone can hear us. Hallelujah. Good to go. I am so blessed that the Father is mindful of us so long-suffering and enduring with us. I am thankful that he has brought us together in this sisterhood, that we may all grow together in love and true fellowship for one another. And I'm truly thankful for uh, Deacon, you know, for Deacon representing Christ in his home so 
thoroughly, so continuously, um, just so humble. If y'all have ever had an opportunity to speak with him or be in his presence, uh, it's a great place to be. Very, very thankful for my husband and Master Deacon Bill. I'm thankful, Jennifer, for Pastor Dow, um, for, y'all ready? His strength in resisting pleasures. His strength in resisting pleasures. Because if you have all or ever been tempted or even tempted to go away from the Father, you know that pleasure presents itself for a season. And this man has truly uh, died to himself that Yah may be glorified in his life and resisted all pleasure, all temptation to live another way, to do another thing, to be a successful man in a different avenue. Uh, so very thankful uh, for him also sharing what he receives from the Father if you have ever been someone who spends time with a father or someone who finds something for the first time or you research something and you get excited about it but you have that, that pride in you that reserves itself or reserves the knowledge, keeping it to yourself or putting your name all over it as if you are the progenitor of that truth, um, that is not something he does. Um, so if you've not had that temptation presented to you before, you wouldn't truly understand what it's like to have such a strength before us like Pastor because he shares truly everything that he receives. Hallelujah. I'd also like to acknowledge the Father for uh, the gentle presence of Mother Carol in this ministry, a, a jewel, a true jewel for us to look up to and to watch a dying breed. And for some of you, uh, you don't have a visual someone with you or around you every day to truly watch uh, how to treat your husband and how to behave and how to respond. Uh, so she has a, a very high price and value, at least in my sight, in my mind. But um, off to you, Sister Jennifer. Let's give some acknowledgments and what's on your heart. Yes, ma'am. Um, I just want to acknowledge the Most High for just always being present in our lives. You know, I'm so thankful that he leads me, and his right hand just continually holds me. And I'm thankful to be a part of a ministry that follows the perfect order of the Most High, you know, where the men are, are strengthened and the women are able to grow as a result of the strength of the men. Um, I want to acknowledge um, our elder here, my head and my master, for his continual labor, for the Father, for his support, to this ministry through his obedience to Yah and by giving his family such a, a righteous example to follow. And I want to acknowledge uh, Pastor Dow for his example um, in leading the men. And, you know, as a, as a result, the women are actually able to experience growth and maturity, um, you know, correction and so much love. And that's something that we never received from this American society. So it's an honor for me to be a part of the straight way truly is. And that's all I have. It's true. I am very, um, I'm very appreciative and honored to be amongst the people of Yah. And I'm, I'm honored to learn the truth that everyone is not equal and that man is not my equal. Um, that's a very important acknowledgement for our listening audience. If you can't acknowledge that man is not your equal, if you cannot acknowledge that he is uh, supreme over you or first in the order of Yah over you, you don't have to listen to this. You don't have to go any further. Um, I'm excited to have the ears to hear and the eyes to see, and I'm truly excited that those of you who are following and agree that man is not our equal I'm excited that the Father has placed that understanding in your heart. Jennifer? Sister Ashley, I'm so happy that I'm not equal to man. I'm so happy that I, I understand and know what my role is, and I'm able to operate in that instead of being, um, you know, the way that we were in the world, uh, just competing for equality. You can never attain it um, if you desire the Father. You'll never, ever attain it. So, I'm so happy to finally have peace because I understand what my role is. And I believe that a lot of us can attain peace if we just understand what our role is and operate it instead of just striving for something that is um, completely irrational. Hallelujah. Just a quick announcement. If there's been any confusion in sending the recipes 
to our future cookbook presentation uh, for you all. We want to put a cookbook together if you haven't heard so far. And if there's been any confusion in trying to get your emails or recipes to go through, we're going to make it really simple. Brother Steve has helped us out. It's cookbook at straightway.com cookbook at straightway.com. That's where you want to send your recipes, your ideas, your questions, or anything that you would like to hear us, um, or I'm sorry, not hear us, but you would like to see us type up or present in our cookbook. If you would like to purchase a copy, what are your expectations in that cookbook? I don't mean providing us a, a layout of how we should do the cookbook. I simply mean what would you like to see in it as far as recipes, what we cook, what we make, numbers, amounts. I don't know. Give us some ideas. Let's get that rolling in. Uh, we'll wrap up in a few months. Um, we'll announce the date that we will no longer accept any information or recipe ideas from you, you, and you, or any of the communities. Please uh, get get your ideas together as well. We'll let you know when the deadline is there. Mother Carol will announce to me, and I'll announce for sure. And then we'll be done taking the recipes. Then we'll try, if we have enough information, to proceed forth and have that ready for y'all by Tabernacles. So that'll be an awesome first-time-ever uh, presentation from Straightway. And I do want to encourage all the sisters on Marco Polo. I really like what I see. I appreciate your accountability one to another. Um, I don't always do videos or do them often. I try to catch up as much as possible and follow you all. Um, I like the fact that Jennifer is there. Her presence is uh, there as a sober mind to lead and direct any of you who may stare off course. I hope that you would also use private messaging one to another, but I hope that you would, as she even said in her video earlier today, uh, sometimes we, when we ask each other questions, you want to make sure that you're not going to someone who's going to tell you what you want to hear. If you, if you acknowledge the truth and the depths of the wickedness in your heart when you are asking questions to another sister, if you acknowledge the truth about yourself, you will see why you are going to who you are going to to try to find out direction for yourself. And it, it does really uh, have eternal dividends and uh, spiritual, um, oh, you, you will have so much growth if you will go to those that won't tell you what you want to hear. Private message those who you think are a, a strong presence in that area, someone the Father's put in your heart uh, to ask questions to. And I look forward to growing with all of you. I uh, appreciate Sister Sakina keeping you all updated with all the events and the blog talks and the things that are that are going on. So, um, you know, just always give her a thumbs up and support as she's just telling everyone uh, uh, because she's zealous, because she's passionate. So she's keeping you all posted with what's going on within the ministry, and I appreciate that, Sister Sakina. Uh, but any updates from you on Marco Polo? Jennifer, do you like what you see? Yes, ma'am. I, I have no updates. I, I really do like what I see, and I, I think we have a really good thing going and, um, you know, I just want to make sure that it stays that way. I had made an announcement last week that, um, you know, we had 95 members as of last week. I think today we have 99 members. And I just wanted to make sure that we know who you are. And so we have everybody um, sending introduction videos, you know, explaining who you are, how long you've been with the ministry, and how do we know you. And everyone has complied, which is um you know, a wonderful thing. So I just want to make sure that it, Marco Polo remains a safe environment. You know, it's, a, um, it's still a, a social media website. And, you know, some information may be shared that you don't want everybody to know um, outside of the Marco Polo group. So we just want to make sure it remains a safe environment and that we know exactly who we're dealing with and who's listening to us. So thank you all for complying. Very good. You know, Sister Jasmine Teamer is on there, Brother Miguel's wife. I'm sorry, Deacon Miguel's wife is on there. So you can seek her, myself, or even Jennifer if you have any questions on who you should make friends with or who you should reach out to. It is uh, very appropriate for you to uh, question. This is your soul at stake. Hallelujah. Um, I wanted to just briefly also add, Sister Jennifer, without uh, speaking to you, get your thoughts on um, Pastor speaking about acknowledging the truth. I liked how uh, he brought up amen and how how we as women, this is my word, how we as women can actually respond in the tabernacle or in the presence of brothers is 
acknowledging the truth, can you can allow something to come out of your mouth. I know at times the enemy can trap you in your seat and freeze you with fear, afraid to uh, acknowledge the truth or even utter anything because a woman is to keep silent in the church. We get that. But it's very freeing and liberating not to just move your mouth, but to allow something to come out of you, uh, just even under your breath in a way that you can hear it. But you can say, sure. You can say, amen. You can say, yes. You can say, so be it. So I hope going forward that um, I hope we're not loud ever as women, and we won't be. We would be rebuked. We are to stay silent in the assembly. But in order to free your own soul and to acknowledge the truth, please feel free to say amen, yes, yes, yah, so be it, okay, to keep yourself acknowledging the word and to keep yourself hearing the word so that it may be applied when you leave, because if you're frozen in fear and not wanting to say anything, you can also walk away not hearing either. Jennifer? Right, yes, ma'am. Um, you know, even Pastor talked about the freedom that you can experience just in your agreement. Uh, to the truth, especially if the man of Yah is asking you a question, you should definitely respond, you know, instead of um, just sitting there and not saying anything. Acknowledge the truth. And, um, you know, your freedom lies in the acknowledgement, in your agreement with the truth. So I think that we forget that a lot, you know, that we are we are so blessed to have been removed from Christianity and the Father has placed us under the teaching of a Jeremiah 315 pastor, and the least that we could do is acknowledge the truth, because we truly are being taught the truth in this ministry, and we can be set free just through the acknowledgement. A lot of the chains can be um, broken in our minds if we just acknowledge the truth. And like Sister Ashley said, instead of um, you know submitting to fear, but just really overcoming that fear and speaking out the truth. Hallelujah. So I want to go to, let's see, earlier, 25. Thank you. I got a, I got a text from Mother. Let me write that down to you, 2523. Thank you very much. All right. So just really, really briefly opening up, this is what I wanted you all to, um, to understand. As we go forward tonight, Hebrews 5.14 says, Strong meat belongs to them that are full age, those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. We're going to talk a little bit about that tonight. I've had the question before, how do you, how do you exercise your senses? How do you discern uh, between good and evil? How do you, uh, how do you discern someone's heart? Uh, how, did you know they were going to fall away? Did you see this in them? Uh, people ask those questions after someone has fallen away that they didn't know was going to fall away. Um, so your, your heart uh, can have a lot of questions when it comes to discernment, especially coming out of the world. You can have a lot of questions. So tonight we're going to talk about some of those senses. I want to go this way, though, Jennifer. Can you go to Jeremiah 4:22 and read that for us? Yes, ma'am. Jeremiah 4, did you say 22? You got it. Read when you're ready. For my people is foolish. They have not known me. They are Scottish children, and they have none understanding. They are wise to do evil, but to do good, they have no knowledge. Hallelujah. Wise to do evil, but to do good, they have no knowledge. You, you must have some admittance of this truth tonight. You must be able to say, yes, I'm yours, y'all. Yes, I'm your child, y'all. Uh, wise to do evil, but to do good, I know not. And to bring this understanding to y'all, we can start even in the garden when the tree of knowledge was presented, and it was a, a tree of knowledge of good and evil, okay? Yah said, I set before you this day life and good, death and evil. And I hope some of this explanation in, in intro tonight will really help any of the hearts tonight that wonder why isn't someone following the faith? Why isn't my, my daughter, my husband, my wife, my cousin, my uncle, I, you know, I'm 
giving them the truth. I'm leading them to Pastor Dow. I'm giving them the videos. Uh, I've labored with them this long, or maybe they follow from a distance for however many years, but when you have a desire to want someone to follow Yah, and maybe you're not understanding the natural separation that occurs when you come this way, why someone not is not listening, you can easily fall into the trap of condemnation by the enemy, blaming yourself that maybe if you had said it a different way or ministered the word or had the right answer, sometimes the, the enemies or I should say uh, the heathen, you know, or, or the Gentiles, the, the scattered peoples and nations of the world can present questions to you that you're tongue-tied at. You just don't understand. You know that you know that what you're saying is right, but they'll twist the question to, to where you don't even know how to explain yourself, and they make you wonder uh, if you said something right, or, man, could I, if I had said something different, would they have followed you, the Father? And you get yourself in these word, these contentious word battles and debates with the word. And so you can condemn yourself when you fall into the trap of the enemy to wonder why someone's not listening to you or, or what you could have done, what you could have done different. Maybe you made a lot of mistakes. Maybe you're blaming yourself, okay? This is just in introduction thoughts here. We're not going to stay there tonight. But going back to the tree of knowledge of good and evil, and Yahweh setting before you life and good and death and evil, and giving every man this choice, even to this day. The heart knows its own bitter bitterness, but the heart also has this choice. Abigail was married to a man, and she was a woman of what the word says, good understanding. And she was married to a man that was evil. The word says he was evil in his doings, and he was from the house of Caleb, a righteous, a righteous man. But he's evil in his doings. Job said, I looked for good, but evil came. He said, I waited for light, but there came darkness. And and continually you'll read about David and him being, uh, he'll say, I was rewarded, or they rewarded me evil. They rewarded me evil for my good. If you know what that feels like, that's, it's painful. And David says, they love evil more than good, and they love lying more than righteousness. And I think in your mind, when you come into the faith, you have to acknowledge that there's a, a huge distinction and separation between peoples of this world and the other nations and how you, what you've embraced. And it says the Proverbs 31 woman, she will do him good and not evil. See, she has a choice. Every woman has a choice. You have a choice as a, as a wife how you're going to do your husband. No one's twisting your arm. This show is not condemning you. No one's in front of you, uh, you know, making you do anything. You are choosing every day to respond the way you respond and react the way you react. Jennifer? Yes, ma'am. Um, you know, when we experience um, evil, we should really be grieved by it. Like the word says that, you know, we should know the difference between um, good, the righteousness, and evil. Just like David prayed that, you know, he said rivers of water ran down his eyes because the people, they made void the law. They didn't acknowledge the law. You know, they disregarded it. And so in our hearts, we really should be grieved because of that. And we can't just skip over the fact, <clears throat> you know, that things are evil and um, Sister Ashley, you talked about, you know, getting in a, a, a word battle with, you know, someone that may be your relative or someone that may ask you questions, and then you leave the conversation wondering if you answered properly. Did I say the right thing? But, you know, we have to understand and know when a question is actually foolish and when it's, it's provoking you to, um, to just create strife. So that's one thing that we have to be able to discern as well, because that is evil when the intent is to just create strife, um, you know, in someone's heart. Is that Ashley? Malachi 2.17 comes to mind. We pull that up. I'm thinking of uh, Jeremiah 13 where it says, um, can an Ethiopian change his skin or a leopard his spots? So if you wonder 
why someone is, is the way they are. It even says, then may ye also do good, but they are accustomed to evil. There's a big separation between us and them. When you acknowledge Yah, when you embrace this way, there's a cutoff. There's a huge cutoff. Malachi 2.17, will you read it? Ye have wearied Yahweh with your words, yet ye say, wherein have we wearied him? When ye say, every one that doeth evil is good in the sight of Yah, and he delighteth in them. Or, where is the Yah of judgment? This makes me think of feeling sorry for the wicked. Jennifer, what's your thoughts? Yes, ma'am. You know, sometimes that we, we actually forget <clears throat> that Yah is righteous in his judgment and in everything. You know, we're not supposed to rejoice, you know, like when our enemies, um, when our enemies fall. We're not supposed to rejoice at it, but we're supposed to understand that the judgment of Yah is righteous at all times, and we're supposed to acknowledge the truth at all times. And, you know, we shouldn't weary Yahweh in any way with our words, with our actions, our deeds. We need to acknowledge evil for what it is at all times. Yes, ma'am, and we should not weary him with our soul ties and our family connections. Um, if you If you wonder if there are barriers, in your mind, as Pastor has mentioned in the past few weeks, ser uh, sermons and messages, if there's barriers that it's actually blocking the Father from speaking to you, using you, setting you free, healing you, delivering you, um, when you don't separate yourself from evil or from those who um, desire lying more than righteousness, who love evil more than good, if you don't set yourself apart, to hell with it feeling lonely. I feel alone. I feel like I have no one else. See, feelings is an issue, too, that we're going to talk about tonight. But you have to stand. You have to make a strong determination to set yourself apart from those who oppose your Yah, your mighty Elohim. Jennifer? Yes, ma'am, absolutely. Because, you know, if they hate Yah, then they hate you. And so it's, it's just that simple. That's all I have. Oh. Hallelujah. I want to go over to uh, Ecclesiasticus. Let me let me find it here. I'm going to chapter 17. Y'all give me a second. All right. If you don't have a Apocrypha, A-P-O-C-R-Y-P-A-H, Authorized King James Version is the one I have in my hand, Apocrypha, get one. Barnes & Noble, $12 I think I paid for mine. All right. Ecclesiasticus or the Book of Sirach, chapter 17. All right, we're going to the very beginning of time, okay? Y'all can acknowledge in your minds, yes, Yah, amen, so be it of the truth. This is the word of the living Elohim. It says, the Lord created man of the earth and turned him into it again. He gave them, talking about man, he gave them few days and a short time and power over the things therein. That means they're in the earth. He gave us power over the things of the earth. He endued them with strength by themselves and made them according to his image and put the fear of man upon all flesh and gave him dominion over beasts and fowls. All right, so he set his um, establishment, his order, his sovereignty over man. Okay? Key in on this verse, chapter 17, verse 5. Speaking of mankind, all right? Listen up. They received the use of the five operations of the Lord. All right? So every man has received these five operations. And it says, in the sixth place, he imparted to them understanding. And in the seventh, he gave them speech an interpreter of the cognations thereof. All right, so I'm going to read to you the five operations that Yahweh, the Lord, has given us all. And it says, in the sixth place, he gave you understanding. In the seventh, he gave you speech that you would interpret all five operations and interpret your understanding as well. Okay, so the speech was given to interpret all cognations, cogitations. Verse 6, here we go. 
the five operations of the Lord in your body is counsel and a tongue, eyes, ears, and a heart gave he them to understand. All right, those five things again. Counsel, tongue, eyes, ears, heart. All right, it says, verse 7, With all he filled them with the knowledge of understanding, and he showed them good and evil. He set his eye upon their hearts, that he might show them the greatness of his works. See, that's deep right there. His eye is on your heart that he may show you the greatness of his works. All right? Direct communication to the Spirit. He gave them to glory in his marvelous acts forever, meaning he allows us, that they might declare his works with, understanding okay and the elect shall praise his holy name besides this he gave them knowledge and the law of life for a heritage he made an everlasting covenant with them and he showed them his judgments their eyes saw the majesty of his glory and their ears heard his glorious voice. And he said unto them, Beware. All right, warning to all of us. Last verse I'm reading. Beware of all unrighteousness. Okay? Unrighteousness is only amongst a people striving for righteousness. Okay? As pastors taught us, Jesus Christ is our measuring stick not your brother or your sister or another nation or, or anyone in your family. No, Jesus Christ is your measuring stick. So you are to beware of all unrighteousness amongst the body. And he gave every man commandment concerning his neighbor. And we know that commandment, right? To love your neighbor as yourself. Interesting warning in beware of all unrighteousness. And what comes to my mind, Jennifer, I don't have many thoughts, but I know you'll have something to add, is so much happens between two women that oppose each other. So many feelings. What say you? I think it's interesting that he puts <clears throat> together, he joins together where he says, um, you know, beware of all unrighteousness. And he gave every man commandment concerning his neighbor. And I think it's very interesting that he joined those two together. And we really have to be careful how we treat one another, how we treat our sisters, how we treat our brothers, um, you know, even how we as women relate to our husbands, because that is where we offend the most high. That is where the wickedness really creeps in when you're relating to your neighbor, when you're relating to one another. So I really thought that was interesting that he joined those two thoughts together. Hallelujah. And as a family, as a, a body of Christ, uh, my heart really grieves for um, what our men and brothers and husbands of the ministry have to go through. I know depending upon where you're at or what assembly or who you are, you may or may not be able to see at times what I'm allowed to see or know what I'm allowed to know, but still in part, the burden is very strong when you love a brother with all your heart and you would wish and hope and pray that his wife would come along just to see her undermine him or do him harm or wrong. It really burdens your heart, just like if anything's going on with, with my sisters in general. You have a heart of compassion for the body. We're going to get back to the five things he's given us, but for a moment... I think about how I think about wisdom because wisdom, according to the apocrypha, wisdom is given to every generation. But she says that in every generation, I pass into holy souls. So in every generation, wisdom passes into holy souls. Wisdom is not given to everyone listening to my voice tonight. 
just because you're tuning in to blogtalkradio.com forward slash straightway. Uh, pastor Dow is my pastor. I live at 202. No, uh-uh. Wisdom passes into holy souls. Remember, we're getting back to discernment and being able to discern between or having your senses exercised to discern both good and evil because this is going to set you apart. This is going to distinguish you from other people's. He that has small understanding and fears Yah is better than one that has a lot of wisdom and transgresses the law of the Most High. That's according to Ecclesiastes 19. He that has small understanding and fears Yah is better than one that has much wisdom but transgresses the law of the Most High. So never account your understanding or your wisdom as a light thing because it's better to have small understanding and fear Yah. But Ecclesiastes 18 says that a wise man will fear in everything. Y'all take this out, okay? A wise man will fear in everything. All right? So we're, we are often accused to be um, legal. But here's, here's a good text for you because a wise man will fear in everything. And it says, in the day of sinning, he will beware of offense. But a fool will not observe time. I'm going to say that one more time. A wise man will fear in everything. And in the day of sinning, he will beware of offense. But a fool will not observe time. All right. And what that is stating is that a wise man is, he has enough fear of Yah. That in the day of sinning, in the time of temptation, when the uh, time presents itself to act out of character, to act in the flesh, to um, add fuel to anyone's fire, to offend her sister, to backtalk her husband, right? In the day of sinning, she's going to beware of any offense. She's going to walk uprightly. She's not going to feed anyone's offense or any way that they may be thinking, She's going to carry herself in such a way. But it says a fool will not observe time. So it's very foolish of a woman to act any way that she wants to act without the fear of Yah. Because in the day of sinning, she's not aware of anyone else's offense. She cares for no one else. She's a, a sovereign to herself, an island to herself. So a fool is not going to observe what time it is. It's time to be holy. It's time to respond correctly, not based on someone else doing you right first. Because a wise woman will fear in everything. There's another, uh, another way that I've observed mother throughout the years, how she has truly feared Yah in everything and every time and every way, not waiting on uh, someone else to do right or to do her right, it's just in the day of sinning, sisters, you need to be aware of all offense, and you do right. You know to do good or evil. You have to choose. Jennifer? Yes, ma'am. You know, it's that, that holy righteous fear is what keeps you obedient at all times, and that's what Yah is looking for is your obedience. You know, over anything else, he's looking for our obedience, and I think we miss, you know, what the holy righteous fear is. You know, we're we're not, it's not an unstable, um, panicked type fear. It's a holy righteous fear that we don't want to do anything at all to misrepresent Yah because we are supposed to be the example, you know, of, of the bride. And so that you don't want to do anything that would misrepresent that image at all, nothing. And you, you understand that the way that you relate to your sisters, the way that you relate to your husband, you're literally relating that way to the Most High. You're doing it unto him. So, you know, if you're, um, if you're being loving, um, if you're being kind, you're doing it unto Yah. But if you're being disrespectful, you're being disobedient, you're being rebellious, you're doing it unto Yah. And so we have to have that fear because the fear will always keep us obedient no matter what temptation may come, no matter what the devil will try to um, submit to your mind. I think that was um, Shabbat when Pastor Dow was talking about how, you know, Satan fights the word in your mind. 
And victory is when you are um, in agreement with the truth verbally in, in your mind that you're not going to allow Satan to steal um, the victory or steal the truth or take the truth that, it, that the Most High has planted in your mind. So Satan, he will fight the word in your mind. So you have to resist that temptation and you have to have that fear on you to just not let loose, to not act out of character, to not say um, what you're tempted to say. Sister Ashley? Very good. Two thoughts come to mind, really. I think about Solomon because he desired wisdom above riches or, or above wealth. And he was talking about in the, in the book of Wisdom of Solomon how he had prayed and understanding was given to him, and he called on Yah, and the spirit of wisdom had actually came to him. So y'all have to understand that wisdom is a spirit that op operates amongst the body of Yeshua, okay? Not everyone claiming to be Israel, because you can utter speech out of your lips, has wisdom. No way, right? And he says that he preferred her. And he said, I counted wealth as nothing in comparison with her. And he said he didn't liken her to any priceless gem, Okay, this is like King Solomon, okay, who had wealth. He had a lot of things. He saw beauty. He saw what we would call vanity. He saw everything in his time. He had it, but he wanted wisdom. And he said he loved her more than health, and he loved her more than beauty. He chose her rather than even light because he said her radiance never ceased. But he said all good things came to him along with her. Like in her hands, in wisdom's hands, there was wealth. Uh, one of the things that I liked about him, his speech, was he had said that he learned without guile. Okay? That, that's interesting right there. That's something to think on for, for another time, y'all, when you're in your own meditations. But he learned without guile. So when you got uh, a pastor ministering to you or your husband ministering to you or wisdom, the spirit of wisdom ministering to you, you're learning without guile, without the fleshly uh, senses or inconsistency of uh, uh, feelings of the flesh. He learned without guile. And he said, I imparted without grudging. He imparted. See, so that makes me think of pastor imparting wisdom into the believers, into the body of Yeshua, into the sons of Jacob, into uh, all the avenues of social media. He's imparting without grudging uh, because someone did this and this to me. I'm not going to withhold good from you because I have learned without guile, right? So there's a character that as women we could really take on that's not based on what anyone else has ever done to us or what has been done to us because we were victim, or what, what happened to us when we were a small child, a little girl, et cetera. We can take on a nature um, that is new, and I appreciate that. But what it comes to mind when Jennifer was speaking was when pastor teaches us that, or pe teaches the men of the ministry that they should not give their heart to a woman because Solomon did, right? We have examples of, of the mistakes that men have made, but don't give your heart to a woman. What is he really saying, daughters of Zion? Don't give your heart to a woman. And I'll explain in my words. I'll explain what he's saying. Don't give your senses to a woman. Don't give your senses to a woman. This falls back on what we just spoke about in Ecclesiasticus with the five things that the Father had put in every man. He gave every man counsel. He gave him a tongue. He gave him eyes. He gave him ears. He gave him a heart. Don't give this to your wife. Don't give these senses to your wife. Okay? Because I've also given you understanding and I've given you speech to interpret all of these, all of these operations. If what happens is... When we willingly become blinded to discerning, I should say, when we willingly become ignorant and blinded to using and exercising our senses to discern both good and evil, what can happen at that point is surprise can come. Wow, I'm surprised she fell away. I'm surprised my husband did this and this. I'm surprised my wife walked out. I'm surprised my daughter is this. I'm su 
surprise, when you are not exercising your senses to discern both good and evil, and separating yourself apart from evil, much surprise happens. Jennifer? You know, I, I think as wives, we have to um, <clears throat> remember that you don't want to know everything that your husband knows. Because, you know, as women, we can't handle everything that they know. I don't want to know everything that, that um, Elder Rufus deals with or that he knows. I, you know, I understand my limitations as a woman, and he understands it as, as well, and it really is a, a protection. It's a protection. He loves me enough to to protect me. So he's not going to give his heart over to me because it's a protection. And so I think we have to look at it that way. Instead of being offended, um, you know, we don't know everything. You don't want to know everything. You can't handle it. You really can't. And, you know, you talked about um, wisdom, how wisdom was imparted to Solomon. And we have to look at the motive. You know, um, our motive needs to be that we want to be able to edify others. We don't want to, um, you know, the Father's not going to give you wisdom just to, so that you can be selfish and you can just keep it to yourself and you can decide when you're going to um, distribute wisdom or, or when you're just going to keep it to yourself and, and not edify anybody else. It doesn't work that way. So, you know, all the gifts, everything works by love. So you have to, your motive has to be love for you to even obtain wisdom. You have to want it for the body. Sister Ashley? Correct. And the love, the romantic love that is taught by this society is going to drive you to want to know what your husband knows. So when you're presented with the truth, just as Jennifer even spoke tonight, into, into your ears. I'm going to explain it this way. If you have the ears to hear what she's saying, that means you are now judging your intention you are now questioning yourself, saying, why have I wanted to know what he knows? Why have I been nosy? Why have I been questioning him? And now, guess what? You're, a, you're held accountable. See, that's why the word is so powerful, because when it, his word is spoken, it is a test to the heart of man that you get to choose this day, good or evil. You get to choose if I'm going to pick up his cell phone and go through it, see who he's calling and who he's talking to. You get to choose. But now if your ears have been listening to tonight, you are now held responsible and accountable from this moment on, going forward with your actions and attitude towards your husband. See, that's the weight of truth in this ministry. So, no, we're not getting by. Choose you this day, good or evil. I was thinking about, I was thinking about our senses. And, and, you know, how we're taught what our senses are according to the flesh, according to the body. And this world says that um, sight, what does it say? Sight, smell, hearing, tasting, and touching. Now check this out because as I said earlier, when a, when a man gives his heart over to a woman, he gives his senses over. So let's think about the senses for a minute. Sight. We know that according to the flesh, sight is your vision. It's the capability of your eyes to focus on something, uh, to detect an image of visual light before you, and how that's all uh, reflected back into your retina, and your brain presents an image. Okay, so your eyes can see. If your eye is weak, if it's damaged, then your sight is impaired. Okay? That's, that's sight. That's one of the senses we're given, okay, according to this world. Another one would be um, hearing, okay? And the world says hearing is sound detection or, let me sound smart, electrical nerve pulses in your inner ear. <laughs> that, that's, that's what sound is. So when, when nerve pulses in your inner ear detects vibrations, then you can say, I hear Yes, I hear you, but Isaiah can say, Yah can say to Isaiah, go tell this people, hear you indeed, but you understand not, see you indeed, but you perceive not. 
So there's a huge distinguishing um, barrier between what the world would say, you have sight, you have hearing, right? Let's go down the lens of senses. You have taste, which is the, the capability to detect what? A flavor, uh, a substance when it's consumed. But we weren't even created to taste outside of clean foods that were created for us. So what is it when David says, taste and see that Yah is good? Do you know if you look up taste, according to Hebrew thought, it is to perceive? Perceive. That doesn't gender to the flesh at all. Jesus said some will not even taste death. What does that mean? Some will not even experience death. That's concrete. Jesus was made lower than the angels. He suffered death. He was crowned with glory and honor. And by his grace, or the grace of Elohim, he tasted death for every one of us. What was that taste like? It's very different. See, the, the world caters to the flesh. Sight, hearing, taste, smell, touch. But we cater to the spirit. There's a drastic difference in the world's descriptive five senses and what Yah has given us, our true senses. As I said earlier, counsel, tongue, eyes, ears, and heart. All these things are used to receive or discern or perceive. So when... I want to read a story in King uh, about King David. Let me go there. But Jennifer, uh, tell me your thoughts so far about the difference in our senses. You know, I wanted to say this is why it's so important uh, for us to have the Ruach, the Holy Spirit, because then you'll understand the difference, um, you know, between the spirit and the natural. You'll be able to understand that, you know, the senses are actually different from what it talks about in that word and between what you've experienced in this world. That is two different things. So this is why it's so important to have the spirit of Yah, because if you don't, you're going to be confused when you read this word, and you will have no understanding at all. Hallelujah. Let's go to, do you have 4th Maccabees tonight? I have it in my, uh, yes. let me see what this is. Okay, I just have a, I have a, holy, a holy Bible with the Apocrypha in it, but you have 4th Maccabees. Is that right? You got it? Yes, ma'am, I do. Go to 2... Chapter 2, verse 21. We're going back to the beginning once again with how Yah uh, created or fashioned human beings, okay? He gave them counsel. He gave them a tongue, eyes, ears, and a heart. Let's go back to uh, how he fashioned us with three more things. 221, 4th Maccabees. See, I'm hoping ours match up. Our people were deeply angered by this announcement no, and pro. No. no, it's not matching up? Okay. No, okay, no problem. Thank you for reading, uh, you know, letting me know that they might not match up. That wasn't even in my mind. Let me read mine. 221 for me is when Yahweh fashioned human beings, he planted in them emotions and inclinations. But at the same time, he enthroned the mind among the senses as a sacred governor over them all. Y'all get that? Your mind is a sacred governor over all emotion, all inclination, meaning all feelings. To the mind he gave the law. All right? To your mind he has given his law. And it says here, the one who lives subject to his law will rule a kingdom that is temperate, just, good, and courageous. All right? So y'all fashion human beings with three things. All right? Emotions, inclinations, and senses. But he enthroned your mind above them all. And for, for a sister or for, you know, just women in general, it's, us given to our nature as weaker vessels, it's hard to embrace that the mind is sovereign over how you feel because when you have not exercised your senses, you have not practiced distinguishing between good and evil, it's very difficult for you to put his word, his law, 
that he has given you in your mind, sovereign. It's hard for you to put your mind and his law sovereign over how you feel. Okay? But if you live by his law, then you're going to rule a kingdom that is temperate, just, good, and courageous. Jennifer? You know, sometimes it it's possible to ignore what is evil or acknowledging what is evil and just ignoring it and still doing what is evil. You know, you ignore it, you ignore it, you ignore it for so long that your senses become dull because you've ignored, you know, what the Father has given you to be able to discern the difference between good and evil. So you ignore it over and over and over again, and your senses become dull. But in the beginning, you, you really did have the ability to sense what was evil. So, you know, if you're in that place, you really have to truly repent, you know, because you, you've ignored it for so long and you've grieved the Holy Spirit. Very good. I want to I want to speak of David's righteousness. I'm going to go to Fourth Maccabees again. This is Fourth Maccabees uh, chapter three for me. I wanted you to read a little bit tonight, Jennifer, but ours don't line up, so I'll go ahead. This is about David. After I read, I'll ask you your thoughts. Y'all check this story out, okay? Now this can be explained more clearly by the story of King David's thirst. And what they're saying can be explained is actually having rule over your emotions, having rule over your passions and your desires. So they're about to give an example of how this can be uh, concrete. All right? David had been attacking the Philistines all day long. And together with the soldiers of his nation, he had killed many of them. When evening had fell, he came sweating and quite exhausted to his royal tent, around which the whole army of our ancestors had encamped. Now all the rest were at supper. Okay, so they were eating. But the king was extremely thirsty. And those springs, y'all know that's uh, water from the earth, Springs were plentiful there. He could not satisfy his thirst from them. Okay? Watch what happens. A certain irrational desire for the water in the enemy's territory tormented and inflamed him, undid and consumed him. When his guards complained bitterly because of the king's cravings, two staunch young soldiers, respecting the king's desire, armed themselves fully and taking a pitcher, climbed over the enemy's ramparts. Okay, so they now went into the enemy's gates and they took a pitcher to fill it for King David because he's thirsty. All right? So they went searching throughout the enemy camp and they found a spring, and from it, they boldly brought the king a drink. Watch what happens. David, though he was burning with thirst, considered it fearful danger to his soul to drink what was regarded as equivalent to blood. All right, so he's not going to drink this water regarding it as equivalent to blood, an unclean, unholy thing that we cannot consume. Life is in the blood. It is forbidden to, for an Israelite to consume blood. So now he's considering the water of his enemies or from his enemies' springs to be the equivalent of blood. Watch this. And you know he's thirsty too? Therefore, opposing Reason to desire. He poured out the drink as an offering to Yah. For the temperate mind. Y'all hear that? Temperate mind. Can conquer the drives of the emotions and quench the flames of frenzied desires. It, what's it? The temperate mind can overthrow 
bodily agonies, even when they're extreme, and by nobility of reason spurn all domination by the emotions. Meaning, you understand the mind's sovereignty over everything you feel, over every emotion, every communication, every sense, every passion. Your mind has been given Yah's law. Jennifer? You know, when you read this story, Sister Ashley, I I think it's really interesting how he had a desire and it was presented before him. And he easily could have drank, you know, with how bad he desired it and how bad he wanted it. He could have easily taken a drink, but he seared Yah above his desire and above his, his passion for, you know, this water. And I think about, you know, as we, as we approach, um, you know, the end times and, or how we're, we're in the last day actually right now and how things are progressing so fast, do we have this in us? what David had in him, you know, the temperate mind. Do we have a temperate mind that would be able to conquer, um, you know, the emotions that would try to dictate what we should do? Do we even have a temperate mind in us that would um, try to, you know, the temperate mind in us that would be able to overcome, you know, that would be able to, to hold our tongues and to not speak when we're not supposed to speak as women, you know, to not say the things that are burning in us to say, you know, the, the, the pangs, it talks about the, the pangs that he felt, you know, the desire was so strong. And a lot of times as women, the desire can be so strong in us to, to say things, to, to do things that are just not for women to say or to do. But will we have the temperate mind that will be able to conquer those emotions to quench the fires of of that desire. Interesting that you brought up speech. What comes to my mind is a verse in uh, in Sirach and Ecclesiasticus uh, chapter 28. A backbiting tongue has cast out virtuous women and deprived them of their labors. All right. I got I got to stop Jennifer and go Virtuous women were cast out by their backbiting tongue, the tongue given to them by the Father as part of his five operations, and it has deprived them, virtuous women, it has deprived them of their labor. So, everything you think you have done for Yah, all the works that you have accomplished, all the have we not prophesied in your name? Have we not cast out demons in your name? Have we not done this for your people? Allowed them into my home? Fed them? Befriended them? Fellowship with them? Cast out virtuous women, a backbiting tongue, and deprive them of all their labors? You have done nothing. You have done nothing for the Father. Your labors count as nothing. If you cannot stop running your mouth and backbiting, opposing, slandering, trying to present yourself as something and everyone else as nothing, whosoever hearken unto it shall never find rest and never dwell quietly. So the person who is continually given over to the backbiting tongue of a virtuous woman, this is for the hearer. If you're listening to it, you'll never find rest and you never dwell quietly. The stroke of the whip makes marks in the flesh, but the stroke of the tongue breaks bones. Many have fallen by the edge of the sword but not so many as have fallen by the tongue. Well is he that is defended from it and has not passed through the venom. 
who has not drawn the yoke thereof, nor has been bound in its bands. This is, a, this is the man or the person that has not been um, bothered by the power of words or um, been bitten by the venom of the viper. It says the death of it, the death thereof is an evil death. The grave is better than it, better than the stroke of the tongue. The grave is better than the stroke of the tongue. It shall not have rule over them that fear Yah. Neither shall they be burned with the flame. Such as forsake Yah shall fall into it, and it shall burn in them and not be quenched. It shall be sent upon them as a lion and devour them as a leopard. Two more verses. Look that thou hedge thy possession about with thorns and bind up thy silver and gold and weigh thy words in a balance. Weigh them in a balance. Are they worth saying? Is what I'm thinking worth saying? And make a door and a bar for your mouth. This is the word. Make a door and a bar for your mouth. And beware that you not slide by it, lest you fall before him that lies in wait. Don't even slide by the door and the bar of the mouth of someone who has a backbiting tongue because you're going to fall into it. It lays in wait for you to tell you what you don't need to hear and what you want to hear if you fall into it, right? Inquiring minds want to know. Jennifer? You know, if you go back to where it says, Whoso hearkeneth unto it shall never find rest and never dwell quietly, a really good test is do you have peace in your life? You know, are you experiencing peace in your home? I remember um, Pastor Dow talked about, <clears throat> you know, going to visit home, and he'll wait to see if the peace of Yah is there. You know, do you have peace in your home? When people come into your home, is it a peaceful environment or is it just full of chaos because, you know, you are chaotic because of your tongue? So this is a really good test here. Do you have rest? Do you have peace? Are you able to dwell quietly or are you always having to give your opinion? Are you always having to, you know, are you just being ruled by your emotions just by saying uh, or speaking loose words that really don't need to be spoken. If that's you, then this is, you need to read about this backbiting tongue and truly repent. And it's interesting, again, it talks about the woman, the virtuous woman. You know, it's, it's not talking about a man. It's talking about virtuous women. Here's the order. Yah over... Yeshua, Yeshua over man, man over woman, woman over child. So as a woman, if you're waiting on Yah, Yeshua, or a man to help you with your children, that could be a righteous request. But at the same time, depending upon your intention, if you're waiting on someone to help you with your children, you are above them in order. In Yah's order, Yah, Jesus, man, woman, child. You are sovereign over the children, the teacher, the trainer of them. Don't wait on someone else to make a decision for you to discipline or to teach or to train, to help, to comfort, to nurture, to nourish your children. As Pastor has taught us, and I believe 100 or 1,000 percent, I see firsthand having three boys that a woman cannot raise male children. Teach and train, yes. Nurture and comfort, yes. But just even look at David's strength when he said, I'm thirsty, but I'm pouring this out to Yah. Now, if his wife, the same one that mocked him for dancing, was right there, what do you think she would have said? Oh, come on, honey, you're thirsty. Let me get you some water. Because the emotions are completely different. Let me tell you how to handle this, y'all. This is very important. This is very meaty for some of you who, you know, I'm, I want a husband. I want a man. I want someone who is going to help me for my children. I'm a 
single mother of this many children, etc. Number one, I don't speak from experience, so I don't speak as a fool before you because I know it's got to be a weight and a burden. But there's always a solution to everything in Yah. Just like Pastor said in his video, that's why community is so important, at least even for us, because the men, without the father figure, get tutored by other male figures. But let's go back to you for a moment. We only, Jennifer, are able as women to hold so much. And that means emotion, too. And when you're topped off with emotion, day after day after day, and you're overwhelmed with this and that and whatever your circumstance is, when you're topped off, the only way that you are able to release everything that is in you is to the Father in prayer. That is why your communication to Him and the infilling of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues, that's why it's so precious and so necessary. Because if you do not practice giving everything to the Father in full repentance, all your worship, all your being to Him, what happens is you spew out of your vessel, out of your tongue, to your sisters, to your family, to your husband, all the things that should be taken care of in prayer. Ecclesiasticus 23, it's 25-23, it says, A wicked woman abateth the courage, and maketh a heavy countenance and a wounded heart. All right, so a wicked woman makes a heavy countenance and a wounded heart. All right? A woman, check this out, if she maintains her husband, if she's maintaining him, if she's sovereign over him and first in order over him, she is, this is what the word says, full of anger, full of impudence, and she's full of much reproach. That means you don't even want to go over there. You don't even want to see her. But here's one that I always hear from Mother Carol. It says, a woman that will not comfort her husband in distress makes weak hands and feeble knees. Now, that goes contrary to your thinking because a woman who is maintaining her husband is not going to comfort him in his distress. Jennifer? Jennifer? Yes, ma'am. This is why, you know, it's such an honor for me to be in this ministry because this ministry will strengthen a man. This ministry strengthens a man to recognize the woman that you just read about, you know, the woman that will not comfort her husband in distress, um, the woman that abateth the courage, you know, and this is why it's, it's so important to have the order that we have, the order of Yah that the men can be strengthened and that the women can follow suit through, um, you know, correcting any poor or any bad behavior that's been learned from this world. Very good. It says, a woman that honors her husband shall be judged wise of all. She that dishonors him in her pride shall be counted ungodly of all. Going back to um, a woman that's going to comfort her husband in distress, See, when he's in distress, isn't that the perfect opportunity for you to tear him down, to belittle him, to say, man, I knew it, I told you so. You've done this over and over. Here you go again, or whatever your mind may say. Jennifer, isn't that the perfect opportunity to have no fear of your speech and allow your emotions to rage? You know, it would seem that it would be the perfect opportunity, but it's it's a very dangerous thing to take advantage of that time and you will lose the trust of your husband and you'll never ever be able to gain it back again if you have a husband who trusts in you you know in his heart safely trusts in you you should regard that and and you should just um protect it you know and you should feed it with all that you can and you should build him up when you can but if you take advantage of that you are going to lose his trust and you'll never, ever get it back. Hallelujah. So, let me go to another one. I'm thinking of Ecclesiasticus chapter 19, verse 13. Is it verse 13 I want? Uh, let's see. Yeah. 
This goes back to speech again when we're dealing with each other, okay? It's dealing with each other. Admonish a friend. It may be that he has not done it. And if he has done it, that he would not do it anymore. Okay, so if you go to your friend and you talk to them about something they have done, if they're a friend, it may be that they haven't done it at all or that they're not going to do it anymore. To continue, verse 14, chapter 19. Admonish your friend. It may be he has not said it. And if he has, that he speaks it not again. Admonish a friend. For many times, it is a slander. So believe not every tale. So just because someone says something and someone says something, et cetera, et cetera, it may just be a tale, T-A-L-E. There's one that slips in his speech, but not from his heart. And who is he that has not offended with his tongue? That's all of us. Who is he that has not offended some way, somehow, with our tongue? Admonish your neighbor before you threaten him, and don't be angry. Give place to the law of the Most High. The fear of Yah is the first step to be accepted of Him. And wisdom obtains His love. You want to be accepted by Yah, you fear Him. Fear Him in your relationships, sister to sister. Fear Him amongst His body, knowing that we are all possessions of Him. Jennifer? And, you know, the thing to remember is that Yahweh is always present. You know, he's always in our midst. Um, He's always discerning our heart and our thoughts. And so we always have to make sure that we're sober in our minds and that we're sober before we even speak because he's always present. Let's talk about discerning this. Verse 26, it says, There's a wicked man that hangs down his head, sadly. Okay? Try your very, very best, daughter of Zion, to never hang down your head, sadly, unless you're speaking to the Father who knows all your emotions. To hang your head, sadly, in the presence of the body is to give place to so many things and to drag down the spirit and the presence of Yah in other people. So that's why we are very disciplined um, people here. We can't just carry our feelings and emotions on our sleeve here at Straightway. We're amongst 30 people every single day, day in and day out, believers of like-minded faith. You're not going to just act any way or treat them any way or hang your head down sadly day after day and be defeated. Remember, for everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But strong meat belongs to them, that's us, or I should say some of us, on this land that are full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. So you see someone hang down their head sadly. Look what it says. Inwardly he is full of deceit. That's what pastor says. Be, be careful walking up to someone saying, what's wrong with you? Or even asking your daughter, what's wrong with you? Or asking your son, are you okay? Feeding into their emotions. It says, casting down his countenance and making it as if he heard not. All right? Dragging into his emotions, acting as if he didn't hear you or she didn't hear you. Where he is not known, he will do the mischief before you're even aware of it. It says, for want of power... He's hindered from sinning. See, here's the thing. A lot of people come this way and they get on fire. And for many, many things, want of a title, want of recognition, want to be friends with pastor, want to be noticed by this sister, that husband, etc. So they're hindered from sinning. But yet, it says, when he finds opportunity, he's going to do you evil. That's why the word says... Beware of unrighteousness. You know the law concerning your neighbor. Beware 
of unrighteousness. Jennifer? You know, we, we've learned in this ministry that when you learn how to discern, um, you know, you not only discern evil, but you learn how to discern good. But you have to discern the evil within you first before you can go and try and discern somebody else. And, you know, when you read um, about the casting down of the countenance, you know, and the hanging of the head, um, I think about Cain where it said that, you know, he sought, he carefully sought repentance with tears, you know, but he couldn't find repentance. Yahweh rejected his offering because his heart was not right. His motive was not pure. So you can walk around with your head hanging low. You can have tears in your eyes, but your heart is still not right. You know, your motive is still not right. And so it's really important to check your heart, um, you know, because you could be like Cain. You could be sending up a Cain offering. And it's really important to discern your heart. Hallelujah. I'm going to 1 Timothy 4 2. Do you mind reading it? 1 Timothy 4 2? No, ma'am. I don't mind at all. 1 Timothy 4, verse 2. Speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. All right. Having their conscience seared with a hot iron is having your perception your ability to discern both good and evil, having it seared with a hot iron. You no longer have the ability to differentiate between what is good and evil. So your perception and even your conscious awareness of what you are doing, what you are saying, how you're speaking, how you're treating one another, it's seared with a hot iron. I've seen it. Maybe some of you have seen it. You cannot penetrate that mind. No amount of praying, no amount of wishing and wanting and hoping is going to change it. It is seared with a hot iron. Speaking lies in hypocrisy. Wise to do evil, but to do good they know not. So in this ministry we have seen a, a lot of things. You know, me and another sister were uh, speaking recently and she's very sincere about serving the Father, and she just wants, you know, man, she just wants straightway to understand that I'm I'm in it, you know. I know y'all have seen a lot. You've seen people come and go, but I'm I'm with you. I'm not going nowhere. Hallelujah. I was at that I was at that point early on too. I was so determined to prove that I wasn't going anywhere. But all you can do is just stand. All you can do is continue, and if you want to grow, is to continue to distinguish good from evil. No, sister, that's not right. No, sir, that's not right. Not for me, us to our husbands, just, just meaning one-on-one, -on -one, distinguishing mentally what is right and what is wrong. You exercise your senses, your, your, not the senses that they've taught us we have, touch, taste, smell, hear, all that nonsense. Because we know that you can have eyes and can't see. You can have ears and you can't hear. So I'm not baiting all, I'm not believing what the world says about my senses, that they're of this flesh, because I've been given perception, the ability to distinguish between good and evil. Can you not look out at this ministry and see that we have the fruit? Does Pastor Dow's works not testify alone of himself who he is for? Can you not see that we are different from the world, set apart, good, not evil? If you can't and your conscious cannot acknowledge that we are good and your ways are evil, then there's no help for you. If a woman can rise up and div divide a home, take children from her husband, hate and despise him, There is no good in you. You are wise to do evil. I say, I pray the strength 
and favor of the Most High Yah be upon the men, and I know it is, of this ministry, but it is no new thing for the Father to take strange women from the men of Israel. That's no new thing. It's written from the beginning of the book to the end to separate from the other nations. So what's going on even now in this time where men are going to lose their, their wives, their, their families, their substance, I pray their strength, and I know y'all will give them the increase. Jennifer? You know, and it really is necessary for the strange women to be removed so that the evil can be put away from Israel. And once that evil is removed from Israel, then, you know, that's one less temptation that we have to deal with ourselves. Because if we see this example of a strange wife treating her husband in a disrespectful way, then I'm telling you, what's going to happen is all the other women are going to think that it's okay to to relax in this area. It's okay to to question them in this area. It's okay to say this. It's okay to to talk back or, it, you know, no, it's not okay. So this is why the evil has to be put away from Israel. I remember um, during scripture study, Pastor Dow, he talked about, you know, how it is so important to develop a strong mind now so that your mind won't go astray when you um, become aged, you know, as you age, that if your mind is strong in the most high now. As you get older, you will retain that strong mind. So this is why it's so important to, number one, put the evil away from Israel, Um, you know, not only just physically, but even in your own mind. You have to cast down the evil, wicked thoughts so that you don't taint anyone else. Sister Ashley? Very good, because it says, these speak evil of those things which they know not. He wants again have no fear in their speech. But what they know naturally as brute beasts in those things, they corrupt themselves. This is Jude. Woe unto them, for they gone in the way of Cain and ran greedily after the heir of Balaam for reward and perished in the gang saying of Korah. So it's easy for you to turn from the way for your flesh to run towards pleasure as you see strange women do. That's easy to rise up and speak whatever's on your heart. We've mentioned before the strength lies in the suppression of what you want to say and what you think. The continual crucifixion of what you think or want to express in your mind to die to yourself so that Christ may live. Because these strange women are what? You, if you are a strange woman, you are a spot in our feast of charity. When you feast with us, feeding yourself without fear, clouds without water you are, carried about of winds, trees whose fruit withers without fruit, twice dead, plucked up by the roots, raging waves of the sea, foaming out of their own shame, wandering stars to whom is reserved the blackness, of darkness forever. So, no, I don't feel sorry for the wicked. No, I do not. But, see, what happens is the the more that you stand for Yah, the more you establish whose side you're on, the farther and farther you get away from the unclean thing. So there's no longer a gray area. That's why we have to come out of her. There's a lot of gray area in the city. There's a lot of acceptance of evil things because your consciousness is not exercising your senses. You're not determining what's good or evil. You have much more acceptance in you. You're comfortable with a faggot, a homosexual, abominable things. But the farther you get away from it, it's very disgusting. It's very vile. And 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 when you're comfortable in sin, in the in the state that you're in, in your mind, with the sickness of this culture, you're not going to think like Yah. But you come out, you come out and you exercise your senses to discern both good and good and evil, you are thinking more and more like Him. We want to be more and more like Jesus, Jennifer. Yes, ma'am, we do. You know, when you read the Word of Yah and you read um, the judgments that took place because of, um, you know, sin that occurred, um, you read about the, the gain saying of, of Korah. 
when you read about those who agree, those who are in agreement with Korah and how he came against the, the man of Yah, how he spoke against the man of Yah, and, and how, you know, he got a lot of people to come along with him and to, to fall into agreement. But when you see what the judgment was, you know, the ground opened up. I mean, could you imagine that, seeing the ground open up and swallow, just swallow them? Those who are in agreement with, with the, the unrighteousness, with the accusations against the man of Yah? Could you imagine seeing um, Miriam struck with leprosy, turned white? Could you imagine that? So I don't think that we process when we truly read the word of Yah. We don't process his judgment here and today, you know, because things aren't happening the way that they did back then. And so it's like <clears throat> sometimes in your mind it could be easy to think that you've escaped judgment, but that is so far from the truth. We need to have that same fear in us as if, you know, the ground is going to open up if we open our mouth and accuse the man of Yah, or if we open our mouth and we talk back to our husbands. We, have, we need to have that same fear. Yes, ma'am, because in that account, if you touched anything, y'all understand? If you touched anything of Korah, Dathan, and Abiram, you could be consumed in their sins. Thus said Yahweh. You separate so far from Korah, Dathan, and Abiram that when I open up this earth and I swallow those who oppose my anointed ones and my, I can say, shepherds now, my prophets, then you will be consumed in their sins. There's no, there's no forgiveness when you're being drugged to hell. If you touched anything, and see, for a sister, this is where um, questions can arise because we're not the Holy Ghost police. We're not to, just because you perceive something, see, when you exercise your senses to determine between good and evil as a sister, you don't express um, every vile thought or you don't run around with correction or that ain't right and this ain't right and you should be doing and how about this and, I, you know, just complaining and having that nature about you. Just because you recognize and notice that something isn't right doesn't mean you express it, but you also have to have a balance between love and going to your sisters when necessary. That can't be truly... Um, taught by another woman that has to be experienced yourself but we don't need to verbalize everything sisters to each other we need to be vessels of compassion and mercy we need to be vessels that are forgiving in nature we need to be softer in heart regardless of what a tone or a demeanor uh, seems like you don't need to be so quick to anger or so quick to be bitter so so quick to cast off Yah's people. So you can come this way and get really bitter at Yah because what you see in us is the same thing that you've seen in the world. When Have you forgotten that we all came out of it? That we're all trying to overcome it? We're all in a fight and in a battle and a war together? But the word says, touch not mine anointed and do my prophets no harm. So, hey, the anointed one, in your home, the priest of your home is your husband. I see just even hearing this ministry put forth that strength and give that strength back to the man, it holds you very accountable, woman. It holds you very accountable. And the things that burden your flesh, the diseases that riddle you, the mind that torments you, you need to check your order. Just because you have the feeling of butterflies in your stomach and love for this husband and man that you have sex with does not mean that you're in order. And I think we need to be spoken to this way so that we understand how, how serious and severe it is. It's not a light thing. It's not a light thing to be contrary to the Father. He is holy. Do you all understand that? He is holy. Be ye holy, for I am holy. To discern both good and evil is not to cater to evil, or, oh, well, let me give you a hug while you go through something. If, if a hug is what a sister needs, damn it, you need to give her a hug. You need to have compassion, love, and mercy for her and hug her. You need to help her through her situation. But if a sister don't need a hug, don't touch anything that, that's even of hers. Lest you be consumed in her sins. 
And I don't mean that in general. That's not thus saith Yah, but if you're going to touch something of Korah, Dathan, and Abiram, Jennifer, you will be consumed in their sins. How far are you going to stay away from them? You going to go hug them right before they fall in the crack? You know, it's really about having discretion, having discernment. And under this, this is why it's so important to have your own relationship <clears throat> with the Most High and understanding how to relate to your sisters, you know, how to relate to your husband. Um, and I think we had talked about discretion uh, last month. You know, discretion is judgment. We lack so much judgment as women because we are easily ruled by our emotions. You know, um, if a sister is going through something, you have to understand, okay, she's going through something right now. Do I need to back off? Father, what do I need to do? But instead, what happens is we get this this uh, rejection spirit over us, and we think it has everything to do with us, but it, it has nothing, nothing at all to do with us. So um, like in Proverbs, Proverbs 11, it says, you know, as a jewel of gold in a swine's snout, so as a fair woman, which is without discretion. So a jewel of gold in a swine's snout, it's useless. You know, there's no beauty in it at all, clean. So it's beautiful on the outside, but it's useless. So please don't be that woman. We truly need to have discretion in our lives. And don't expect a man to understand your feelings. I understand that, you know, that's been spoken of many, many, many times, but to truly embrace it and to stop going to him every time you feel something and not being able to weigh between when you need to go and when you don't need to go, um, that's why we pray as righteous women for the men to really grow in strength and be exalted in this ministry because if we pray for the women, they'll go nowhere. We pray for the men the men will see, discern, and apply their own senses to determine both good and evil and not be surprised by the woman that lays in their bosom. So don't expect a man to understand your feelings. That's so important because, and I know it hurts to hear. I'm not speaking without, without feelings here. I'm, I make myself as you. You know, I'm a woman just as you. So it hurts to hear that you, because you want a hug. You want uh, comfort. But we just went over 4th Maccabees is great to really embrace when you are full of desire, when you're full of thirst, as David was, but you know Yah's way. You know that if, if I partake of this, this is wrong. This is not holy. I can't just say, well, because I'm thirsty, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drink this water. He, was, he, was, he, he had been in war slaying men for days and his thirst is it's a drive in the natural body to, to be fulfilled a passion a desire that would do almost anything you can become savage like when you're hungry or thirsty but he still said no i don't want to partake of this and that's how you have to be towards the emotions that oppose the father's kingdom no i don't want this this is coming against the strength that the father is trying to give me Jennifer? Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> and a good, strong husband will not partake in your emotions. You know, when you're in your emotions and <clears throat> you're um, allowing transgression or, you know, sin to go on in your heart because of your emotions, a good husband is not going to partake in that at all. He's going to step away. He's going to correct you, and he's going to give you time to get yourself together. But you're not going to get too much time. So what you have to do is not be offended. You have to discern and understand, okay, he loves me. This is love. And he's not going to partake in your sin by be, being um, emotionally led and emotionally driven by you. Very good. Beware of all unrighteousness. And beware of the unrighteousness first and foremost in you. And if you want to increase in discernment, you discern yourself first, 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 first. I stand before you as a testimony. Literally being on this show is just because I've discerned myself, myself for years, self-reproved myself so that I may teach or share what I have received from the Father, my relationship with him to y'all. So it can be done. 
It can be done. You can develop a relationship with the Father no matter who you are, where you are, if you just love him, accept him, and fear him. But if you stay in any gray areas, if you continue in ways too long, you can have, one, a, a conscience seared with a hot iron, or two, you can just be lukewarm, and he will just spew you out of his mouth. But we need to all have that fire burning in us to live more and more set apart and not to just be comfortable, not be comfortable accepting him, not to, we should be disgusted with how we were in the world, and we should be so far from it that others aren't even comfortable in our presence. It don't matter how uncomfortable you may be when natural family is around. Don't focus on you. Focus on all these other. Their sin is making them uncomfortable. Their sin is separating from me because Yah has had favor on me. All right? Set yourself apart in strength and in confidence, not in defeatism. Jennifer? Yes, ma'am. Very well spoken. You know, I I, I remember um, something that pastor said. I believe it was um, scripture study, but he um, I can't say it word for word. But he talked about how we're so busy focusing on um, you know being defeated. You know, we're so afraid to live life that we actually live life dying. And that's exactly what Sister Ashley is talking about. You know, we focus on being defeated. We focus on the devil so much that we forget about the goodness and the mercy and the power of the Most High Yah. Sister Ashley? Very good. A cloud without water. A cloud without water. Hallelujah. I am all out of words. Jennifer, you want to open up the phone lines or you want to call the show? Uh, we can take a few calls and see if the daughters have anything to say. All right. Let me go to ministry break. Here's your guest call in if you want to share anything or ask any question. It doesn't have to pertain to tonight's topic. We are here for you. We will try our very best to represent this ministry and the lovely women and daughters of Zion that are all around us as we give you any answers. Your guest call in is 310-982-4222. Press 1. Do not forget to press 1 after you call that number if you want to talk to us. Let's go to a mailing break. Shalom. This is Sister Wenda. I hope that all of you are enjoying the broadcast that you're listening to right now. We appreciate each and every last one of you, our faithful listeners and supporters of the Straightway Truth radio broadcast. We try to make sure that we do our due diligence and do our best to ensure that you have the best broadcast as well as the truth coming to you in the hour that we're living in right now. If you would like to help us in this endeavor, your offering will be greatly appreciated in the work of the Ministry of the Most High Yah. Our mailing address for your gift, offering, or letter of support is Charles Dowell, Jr. That's Charles Dowell, Jr. And Dowell is spelled D-O-W-E-L-L. 506 Ellington Drive. Ellington is spelled E-L-L-I-N-G-T-O-N. P.O. Box 32, Lafayette, Tennessee. And Lafayette is spelled L-A-F-A-Y-E-T-T-E 37083. Again, our mailing address is Charles Dowell, Jr., 506 Ellington Drive, P.O. Box 32, Lafayette, Tennessee, 37083. If you would like to contact us by way of phone, the country code is 1, area code 615-688-3025. That's 1 615 Six eight eight three zero two five. You may leave a message there, and be the Father's will, we will do whatever we can to try to return your message. It is our hope and our prayer that as you continue to listen to the Straightway Truth Ministry, and as you apply the teachings of this ministry, that you are finding peace and growth within you, your family, and life as well. Please tell others so that the truth may also have an impact and touch others' lives, so that they may enjoy the benefits of the truth of Jesus Christ, just like we all are. Shalom. The King is coming. 
Hallelujah. Let's go to the phone lines. Area code 519. You're live on Sister Sister 519. Shalom. 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 We hear you. This is Sister Jane from Ontario. Shalom, Sister Shalom. Jane from Ontario. Bless you. What you got? Uh, well, uh, I wanted to call in first and to say that uh, I just wanted to comment on um, earlier in the week when uh, you and Sister Vicky did that uh, YouTube stream with the gardening segment. Yes, uh, ma'am. I really enjoyed that. I wasn't able to um, uh, watch that live, but I did watch that later on, and I thought that was a really interesting format for you guys, and... I liked how it was interactive and, you know, you could actually, as the discussion's going on, people people could put in their, their questions or what relates to the uh, subject matter. I thought that was pretty cool. So I just wanted to let you know that. Thank you so much, Sister Jane. I got a lot of positive feedback, so I will try my very best to keep it coming to you all as topics come up or as uh, other sisters may have things on, on their heart to share. Thank you for watching and listening. What else do you got? Um, I did have a little testimony. Um, uh, last week, uh, we've been planting our garden. Um, so, you know, last week we were putting our garden in, and uh, we're outside with the children, and we had the seeds out in the packages on the table. And, you know, we told the children, okay, don't touch it, stay away. And, of course, you know, we're working, and then I go over to the table, and I see someone's opened a package. So... I call them and I say, okay, well, who did this? And, you know, no one gave me an answer. No one knew who had done it. No one, knew, you know, confessed to, okay, it was me. So it, I was just, you know, it was disturbing just because it's a bad precedent to set for the children, even though it's a small thing, right? Like, just open a package of seeds. But, you know, they were told not to do it. And then they're lying on top of it or someone is. And I didn't want the other children... It's a bad example for them to see, okay, well, someone is lying and they're getting away with it. But I couldn't tell who was lying, so, you know, I was kind of racking my brain, okay, well, how do I deal with this? And I remembered something that I had heard Pastor say on one of his Shabbat services about how he would deal with finding hidden sin in the camp is to pray for uh, the guilty par- party to manifest in a sickness of some type. So um, I decided I was going to do that. I told the children, okay, here's your last chance. You can tell me now. And if you're not going to, then, you know, I'm going to go ahead and do this. And I'm going to pray for the one that did this to, you know, get sick. <laughs> and um, no one did. And, you know, they're like, oh, it wasn't me, it wasn't me. So I said, fine. So I went ahead and did that, and I didn't tell them what manifestation I was going to pray for. I, you know, I prayed for a runny nose and sneezing because that's something that's really uncommon around our house. We don't, our children don't get sick. You know, colds are like years in between for our children. And sure enough, that night, the, you know, the guilty one woke up uh, late at night sneezing his brain. <laughs> so basically, like, he's sneezing for 20 minutes woke up all the other children because, you know, he couldn't stop sneezing. So um, the next day I had them all, you know, sitting there. And, you know, I'm like, okay, well, what happened to you last night? Oh, you know, I I just couldn't stop sneezing. And I'm like, well, do you have anything you want to say to me? Yes, Mommy, I was the one that did it. I'm sorry I lied to you. And, you know, I said, okay, I forgive you. And... I called them all and I said, I want you all to pay attention to this, okay? Children out in the world, they lie every day, they steal, they cuss out their parents, they disobey, they do worse things and they get away with it, but not you. You're different. The Most High has His eyes upon you. And you can't be like the world. And, you know, it seems like it's a little thing, but... You know, you're meant for better things. You're meant to do better. You're meant to be better. And it was awesome. All the children, they all saw it. They all knew that the fear of God increased with my children, and it built up their faith. And, 
it was awesome. And, um, you know, this next generation is pretty special. I mean, when I think about it, like, this is going to be a generation of children that is going to be free from idolatry, and they're going to be free from the curses, and they're going to be able to worship Yah the way that he deserves to be. Like, this is going to be a pure generation. And, um, you know, before my conversion, I found my children oppressive, some, you know, sometimes. And a lot of the times, you know, I get frustrated, but I really gained an appreciation for the job that he set before us and set before all of us as mothers in this ministry. The next generation is what we're all doing this for is what we're all striving for for ourselves too and you know <clears throat> it it I'm just I'm I'm happy and you know, I'm just very happy that Yah's in our lives and he's watching out for all of us and that's kinda all I had to say about that. Bless you, Sister Jane. You know, to be able to hear pastor's words and to actually apply them uh, when it's time for you to discipline or any action that is required of us from Shabbat to Shabbat to reflect back on something pastor said is not only to just confirm your support of him, but your love for the Father. So it is something that occurs amongst those who love the body and love Christ and love the ministry so much that we will hear something that Pastor said and we'll have to apply it. And I appreciate that whole experience and testimony you just shared because now I will go home and actually tell that story to my children, or at least my oldest will understand, and I will use it as a testimony of Yah as well. So I encourage the mothers who are listening to do the same thing, to continually talk to their children about Yah and about the judgments that he is doing in our midst. But thank you so much for sharing tonight. Thank you, and bless you both, and bless everybody. Hallelujah. Bless you, Sister J. Bless you. Shalom. Hallelujah. All right, let's jump to, we got two more. We're going to Ohio. Sister Monica, Area Code 614. Monica, bless you. Shalom. Shalom. Bless you and Mama Jennifer. How are you all? Hallelujah. Shalom. Oh, we're good. Bless you for your encouraging sound. (laughs) What you got? (laughs) I just wanted to say thank you for, um, y'all are like Pastor Dow in the female way, if you don't mind me saying that. In doing surgery, <laughs> so I oh, wanted to yeah. say thank you because, because um, when I converted last month, um, I started feeling. I used to always feel depressed, like oh, I need a husband because I've been divorced for about a year and a half, almost two years, and I always feel like oh God, I need a husband to help me with the kids or with the children, and now you know you just confirmed what I've been feeling for last month of me saying, no, like, I need to be able to handle my children through the grace of Yah, and I really thank you for confirming that um, order is being established with me and my children. Um, and thank you, Mama Jennifer, for, for just confirming that I need to continue to write a correction. Um, I really appreciate the help that you and the straightway women just give me every day. Um, and uh, my youngest heard your voice, Sister Ashley, and he went to sleep so fast because you have such a peaceful voice. Uh, so thank you for having us fall asleep early, by the way. Side note. <laughs> oh, bless you, Sister Monica. I'm encouraged when I see you on Marco Polo, and I have truly never been told I have a peaceful voice, so I will embrace that. <laughs> Hallelujah. And encourage myself with that. I'm so glad. I know the children, now that we have the, the Straightway Airs channel, I just love children, if you know anything about me. And when they come... They're all, they light up because they know me. And I just thank the Father for that avenue because I'm able to love beyond what I ever thought I could, which is to allow so many children into my heart. But anyway, that's just a little personal something, something about me. But bless you, Sister Monica. I encourage you to continue to establish really righteous friendships in the faith, okay? And, uh, you know, stay connected with Jervina and just follow Yah with all your heart. Everything you have need of, whether it be a husband or not, Yah will give it to you. You just be patient and establish your relationship with him my sister with him 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 okay yes ma'am hallelujah thank you hallelujah you're welcome shalom shalom 
Sure. All right. And I never forget Jen- Jennifer's on the phone. Jennifer, you got something to say, Jennifer? <laughs> no, ma'am. I'm just listening. Nothing to add. All right. That's why I like it when you're here, so I can say, talk to us, Jennifer. Let's go to California. Sister Candace. Bless you, Sister Candace. Our last call for tonight. Shalom, shalom. Shalom, shalom, my sisters. Um, Can you hear me okay? Uh, I'm in the car. Um, Yes, ma'am. Can you hear me, sister? Okay, yes. First of all, I just want to tell you, um, again, this segment, uh, what Pastor Dow talked about this after, or this morning uh, on the patron channel, man, it just really cut deep. Um, I talked, I had my husband, my husband, myself, and my son, we were sitting and we were watching that video. And just to see how I need to be as a a submissive wife and then to come back and listen to this broadcast, it's just kicking my tail. It's really beating the hell out of me, and I want it to. And I'm just thankful because y'all knows I want to so bad light up. I want to be a righteous wife and a righteous mother. And I'm glad that you all are speaking on these things because I don't want to be no hypocrite or no play actress going through life thinking that I'm okay when I know I'm not. Deep down on the inside, I need deliverance. I need help. I need the strength of the most high. Prove me, rebuke me, straighten me up again, and keep me to moving forward so that I can be the woman he wants me to be. And I'm so grateful for the teaching. I'm thankful for you, Sister Ashley and Mother Jennifer, for even inviting me in to the Sisters uh, Polo Group because for a long time I've been needing this kind of help for years and never been able to reach it, and now I have it. And I'm like, Father, just please, whatever you got to do in my life, help me to, to meet the mark. Help me. And so he's helping me by you all teaching and preaching and giving it out and telling me where I'm at so that I can really make the choice to live a righteous life. And I can't tell you how blessed I am to have this. Y'all just, I don't know if you can really feel me on this unless you just know where I've been and what I've gone through to even get to this point in my life. And I'm just grateful for all the sisters, the things that you share, the guarding, everything you do. You know, I looked at Sister um, Carolina today with Pastor, he was speaking to Pastor Dow was speaking to her. Just the things I gleaned from there is so much richness in this ministry. And I thank the Most High so much for bringing me this way because I want to be what I see. What I see is righteousness. What I see is set apartness. What I see is realness. I want to be that. And so I ask that you all keep me up in prayer because I want to be what I see in you all. It's an, it's an admonishment because I see just a change, and I just want that. I want that life. I want that so badly. And um, I'm just grateful for this ministry. I can't tell you. I can't express it enough. Thank you. Please continue to do what you're doing. Continue to keep bringing forth that word. Uh, Ecclesiasticus, I'm going to go to work tonight. I'm on my way to work now. And I'm going to read and listen to that. I think I can get it on audio. But I can I can just glean from those scriptures because that was some really good, good word, those five things. And you how you brought that out. I don't want to take up a lot of time, but I just need you all to know I'm appreciative and grateful and thankful for this ministry, the broadcast, Pastor Dow, Mother Carol, and uh, uh, all the sisters and saints that I listen to, Brother Daniel, Brother Kabir, Brother br- the Straightway KC Saints, my husband and I, we, be, we just be just loving all that we can receive. And we just want to be able to be a blessing in, in, in later time as we learn to grow as a family. So I just love you. I appreciate you. And I thank the Most High for this ministry. Bless you and shalom. Hallelujah. And Bless you and shalom. Sister Jennifer, <laughs> go ahead and end the show, but please encourage Sister Candace. I just love to hear her excitement that Yah has given her for, for even just listening to those of us who are younger than her. Um, but go ahead and end the show, my sister. What's your thoughts? 
Yes, ma'am. Sister Candace, it's always a pleasure to hear from you. And it's always so encouraging to hear the passion that you have for righteousness, you know, the appreciation that you have for this ministry. And I know that it, it just it always increases every time we hear you, the passion that he has in, that he's placed in your heart to be righteous. It increases every single time. So never, ever turn from that. Always continue to walk in that passion for righteousness. Well, Daughters of Zion, we're going to end the show. And Sister Ashley talked earlier about, you know, the tongue and how it can be, you know, an evil doorway. And one thing that helps me, one thing that I pray is in Psalm uh, 141, verse 3. It says, set a watch, O Yahweh, before my mouth. Keep the door of my lips. And it's short enough that you can just memorize it. And while you're in communication with him all day, you can just pray that. Set a watch, Yahweh, please, before my mouth and keep the door of my lips. And then you can walk it out and be obedient, you know, to not speak any evil thing at all. So blessings to you all. We love you. Shalom. And Yahweh Elohim said, It is not good for the man to be alone. I am going to make a helper for him as his counterpart. Holy Yahweh Almighty, we're singing. Holy. Holy. 